Dunkirk was easily one of the best theater experiences I've had in the last decade, a movie that actually was enhanced by being seen on the big screen, and while not quite as good on the small one, it's still one of my favorite war films. And unlike a lot of Nolan movies, the plot is very simple. A bunch of allied soldiers in Dunkirk are trapped during the Battle of France and they have to get them out. There's more to it, but that's the basic plot. There's three different stories going on at the same time. There are the men on the beach, some people on a boat, and some fighter pilots. All of them take place over different periods of time, which was a little confusing when I first saw this. I didn't actually realize that's what they were doing, but once you figure that out, it makes a lot more sense. There's not much in terms of character development in this. Most of the boys on the beach are pretty interchangeable. Most of them are played by young unknowns, at least at the time. The only one I recognized was Harry Styles. Normally that would be a hindrance, but it actually kind of works here because it just sort of throws you into the events, and the fact that you don't know much about them just makes it feel more realistic. You wouldn't know much, you're just trying to survive. I feel that this movie also resonated with me personally because when I first saw it, I was 24. Most of the characters, or at least the actors, were around my age, maybe younger, and it made me think, wow, what would happen if I right now we're in that situation it starts with several young men just shot down pretty quick in the streets and i was just thinking imagine if i just died right now it really made me empathize with them even though again i don't really know much about them I think the parts of war movies that I find the most effective aren't the big moments with people making grand last stands or barely making it out. It's seeing them not even getting a chance. Like in the opening to Save and Private Ryan, the men that don't even make it to the beach because they were either gunned down immediately or drowned from the weight of their equipment. Most of the characters off the beach are actually paid by actors you know, and very well. Mark Rylance, Tom Hardy, Cillian Murphy, Kenneth Branagh, all very good. All three of these different stories going on are interesting. The guys on the boat find a lone survival of a shipwreck, and he's clearly suffering from PTSD. The stuff with Tom Hardy and the plane are especially intense because they only have a certain amount of fuel. The music by Han Zimmer is excellent, and the sound mixing is great. Again, seeing this in a theater was an experience, and I didn't even see it in IMAX. Although I will say sometimes the editing is a bit too fast and takes some of the tension away. A perfect example, in the original trailer they show a bunch of men on the boat when one of them looks up and you hear the sound of a plane, more of them look up, you hear it getting closer and closer. It was really effective, but in the movie they actually cut to the planes getting closer and that just didn't have the same effect. But that's only a few times, for the most part this movie is intense as shit. I actually gasped several times, and it's what I like to call an oh come on kind of movie where you think they've escaped danger, they can take a break and breathe, but then something else happens. But one thing that I really appreciate is that it's a story from World War II that I didn't know about, and not many others seem to as well. There have been a lot of World War II movies, but most of them seem to focus on the latter half when the Allies were starting to take control. This takes place in 1940, less than a year after the Nazis invaded Poland. The US wasn't even involved yet, and this movie specifically takes place during the fall of France. The movie is a hopeful film, but in the end, the main goal is just to get these men out of France. But France is lost. No matter what happens to these guys, the Nazis won this battle. And I do think we need more stories like that. We don't win every battle, but it's important to look for hope even when we lose, because that gives you the motivation to keep fighting. This movie is great, 8.5 out of 10. This, in 1917, I think make a really good double feature in that they're just about a small group of people trying to save others rather than actually defeat the enemy. In terms of Nolan movies, it's one of his best and certainly his most straightforward too straightforward. It's so simple that for his next movie, Nolan must have realized he needed to be even more complex to make up for it. So I will see you tomorrow for Tenet.